I love my boat. I'll probably keep it forever because the hull is awesome and I turned it from some basic northern fishing boat into a trophy catching machine. It's got a little bit of everything that I've ever done. When I build somebody's boat, I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. I want that. When I build something else, that's pretty cool. I want that too. So it's kind of a Frankenstein of concoctions. It's made to hold big rods, big baits, and catch big fish. Nothing else. No live well, catch, photo, release. That's how I roll. All I do is hunt trophies. That's it. No tournaments. No nothing. I don't have time for that stuff. Stuff stressful. But there is one thing that it truly annoys me about this boat, and that is the trailer. The trailer is crappy, dinky, too small for the boat, and it stinks. It scares me every time I take it down the highway. I've searched for a decent trailer that will replace that crappy one, and to no avail for the past, like, five years, nothing. But that's okay, because we know how to weld, and we're going to convert this bass boat trailer into a killer tiny boat trailer. Stay tuned. <laughs> First things first, we need to get the right stuff, including marker lights, tail lights, all of it. It all needs to be replaced because that trailer is tore back. And here at West Marine, they have a bunch of marine grade stuff that's supposed to be submersible. Getting regular trailer lights and those regular connectors that come with those cheap trailer light kits won't work. We're also gonna need to re-outfit it with rollers and other things. I had an assortment of roller guides from low to high. The orange ones were the strongest, and this one actually even guides the B-Hall channel directly into the middle as the boat rolls over it. You gotta choose the one that's best for you. Make sure you get the correct size through axles and cap nuts for your application. Also, shockingly, Harbor Freight has a lot of trailer accessories, including some stuff that's marine grade. They have anything from trailer wenches, hitches of all different sizes, a bunch of stuff, like maybe more than some of the bigger department stores. So check it out there for maintenance or upgrades. We're also gonna be going to the metal shop a lot to get scrap steel to do this project. Quick backstory, I need a new trailer, one that's better. And I got quoted for a new trailer. It was six, almost seven grand out of a local placer who makes trailers. And then it was even three to four grand through us to get it from somebody. This trailer was $1,000. He was even going, going down to 950 but you have to fix it. That means remaintenance of all crucial major parts and retrofitting and complete renovation of other parts. And we're going to have to retrofit the guides. The guides on my boat are much more narrow and there are five individual spines down the bottom of the hull. Whereas a big wide bass boat just doesn't have that. So we'll have to cut those off later, but before we can even do that, we need to do some corrosion control here. Clearly this trailer has been neglected and just things that happen to a trailer over time happen. So spend some time to wire wheel it, hit an orbital sander to it, get it down to the good paint and primer, scuff it up, wash it off, put some rust dissolver if you need to, and then just give it a brand new paint coat. Your trailer will appreciate it, and so will you. This trailer has a constant V taper with those initial guides, meaning that it was likely for a bass boat or possibly a jet boat, but it's not gonna work. Most tiny boats, especially most v hulls they are flat at the back and they taper towards the bottom. And we need guys that are gonna compensate for that. Not to mention guys that are actually gonna fit on there without your boat spines leaning on top of them, which will cause you a lot of other problems. We're gonna take those old trailer guys that we cut off and combine them with this three by three by 3 16th inch steel angle, I believe. We're gonna go ahead and mount those all together, attach the angle first, and then attach those trailer guides to the angle allowing for it to be there. This is overkill considering what was on the trailer beforehand for a much heavier boat, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. We're also using the Vulcan OmniPro 220 welder with flux core. The little titanium 125 also did this, but I kept blowing the fuse in my garage. Probably could have had a thicker extension cord and it would have maybe done all right, but it did weld the trailer. This one just does a better job at a higher voltage. So we're gonna use it. I attach the old trailer guide right directly to the angle to give it the top cap needed for you to mount the two x four later.
Not bad. Considering I only had like one and a half welding projects prior to this. We just went all in and we're making the trailer and I'm hoping this all holds up and then my boat doesn't fall off. And if it does, you guys will know immediately. I mean, still is extremely easy. You just you just put the puddle in there, you watch it penetrate the metal and you wait until it fills up just like you're filling up a bucket of water. Then you move over, penetrate, make a hole, fill that bucket, pen, move over, fill that bucket. And the constant filling makes the dime stack look really, it's really just a bunch of individual puddles being created of molten you know, wire into the steel. And I don't think that'll ever move. And they're pretty spot on in terms of layout. And they need to be that way because once we get that map, then doing the middle ones is king. It helps that all these bars were very well done and they're symmetrically sound to each other all the way down. They are, I mean, they had those. Those are already lined up before I cut them off to make the new ones. So two straight down the hole that I know will do okay. And then we'll be doing another row of two. So we'll have to get more material no matter what, but yeah. the two by fours and use them and run them to mark the front and then weld the front that way i know it's level all the way across the trailer i also routed that piece out we'll show you why later but once the back is done and the front is done then the middle is cake you just need to line it up right there with the bunk board all right so this is what we got so far now you know, we gotta get that slag off so we can paint it but those are the welds they came out pretty good that's very strong. And I, I, re, I, I seen the whole thing all around, all four edges, and then all the way down in here, and then underneath on the other side. So that scrap metal, which is good. I mean, I know the angle is overkill, but I think it's exactly what we needed. So we have these, these one runs. So we'll be, we'll be going ahead and we'll be slotting down with a half inch um, router bit, a quarter inch down, we route that out. I ordered two plush lights instead of four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-stage these four plush lights to stick in later. That was a lot of money, that thing. Still is, still is like the new aluminum, by the way. I mean, it just makes me wish I worked with steel before I, was, I spent all the money on aluminum. This will be the piece that we use when we go, to head, go ahead to mount the, uh, the hitch post with the, with the crank. This will be what we use. All right, here they are. This is the initial spread. It's like 9, 18, 27. That's the spread between the spines for how they fit. There's, a, there's five spines. So the three should interlay here and the and the other two should be on the outside of these bunks. There's not, not a whole lot of times where you can just do that, where you can make a, a trailer specifically for your boat. A lot of trailers just come universal to fit any boat. So the one part where it's mostly almost always flat is all the way up, up the core. It's almost always flat. Then it obviously does contour. That's why we have it tight here to hold it. And then it really doesn't start hard contouring until it's way past. So these are only nine feet. So, you know, the boats, so we expect for it to come out here. But right now what we are gonna do is paint these with oil-based enamel. Also reinforce these underneath with a two by two. All the way down and even on the other sides in there, that is just to help with the flex because this is quite a big span. Where you almost wanted to use two by sixes, but then we would be at a slight disadvantage in other cases for the two by sixes as far as like the float variant. So I wanted to just use two by fours and then reinforce them underneath. And they are very stiff. I mean, they were they probably would have been all right before but you know over time constant bombardment with the boat shaking up and down with potholes going down the highway you might you only have one chance to do this right so let's do it right so cover the top the new wood obviously soaked in way less paint the old wood soaked in quite a bit i had to paint this stud like five different times which really isn't bad because once these start to open up and crack then it just leave more porous. It's almost nice to have the wood aged a little bit before you paint it. At the same time, you know, brand new studs. All right, so let's take a look at this. So along the line, you're going to see these things. You see that? That's corrosion, and that's never going to go away. Don't attach new lights to corroded wire because it's just like once it's in corrosion, that's like a cancer that'll never go away. And most of the wire is just standard wire. So you can run marine grade wire that would obviously last way longer. Although most of the lights you're coming through with or whatever they are at. We went and got new trailer lights that should pop right in there. Just like that one. They look like they're the same. Yeah, the same thing. I'll well, check out this kit real quick. Pretty nice little kit. We got this. The ratchet and crimpers are something everybody's kind of on me to get and to stop using the other thing. It actually comes with like micro crimping. 
like any scenario you might actually need, including these big ginormous, which I think that'll be really useful later for when we're trying to, you know, crimp much bigger wire like eight gauge. It's got very, very big, very generous crimping potential. It also comes with a set of wire strippers and they even have their own stuff here. Just a nice little set, nice little, nice little DIY set. Could take and use wherever. We're gonna use it on this. So after much stress, we succeeded. Let me show you something. See this? Those that come inside the kits of lighting wires, that's not marine grade. That's not waterproof. It is the worst stuff you could ever use. And it's a death to your trailer. You're never gonna put your trailer in the water. It's different. I don't know why they sell those things. It's false marketing. It's the worst wire. This is standard wire, standard, standard coatings. You need these and you need a heat gun. You need a waterproof all connections and leads and you can never have these. Cause that will just fail. It is what it is. So they make the rules. Get rid of these or wrap heat shrink tubing around them if you use them. That's it. By the way, we ran 14 gauge anchor marine grade duplex. So it's double coated and it's tin copper wire and we're hoping that's going to last. And we could have gone all traditional nostalgic and got bunk carpet and wrapped it around these two by fours like noobs, like everybody else does. Like the bottom of the barrel, boat companies put their trailers out. Or we could just not do that and use these. These are gator back bunks. These are very high quality. I don't exactly know what the plastic is or the rubber it is, but it is ripping like you wouldn't believe. It grips the boat. It doesn't smash down or degrade like carpet over time to where you get wear holes right through onto the two by four. So you might as well not be using carpet at all. Those things will hold. And on top, to top it off, we have clear ones where you can shine these plush lights through. So we're gonna be mounting lights in each of these. I only have two of these right now. We'll be putting a total of four, possibly six later but they are awesome. We've rigged them on other boats and the combo plush lights with these gator back bunks, they're freaking awesome. We have the link in the description below. You can also just find them directly on tvnation.net. Search gator back bunks and plush lights. All right, go ahead. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. We'll also be using the side marker, which is pretty important to do that because this trailer is a lot wider than the other one. This tape comes on most of these fittings, including the other lights over there. And it's filled with dielectric grease. And that is what keeps this connection fairly waterproof, or at least extremely water resistant. There's a bunch of hackery and holes throughout these fiberglass fenders. So we're gonna use one of those holes to retrofit this marker lights. We're leaking it to Anchor Marine 16 gauge duplex tin copper marine wire and we're going to be running that through and linking it all to the parent wire in one bundle out the back that way nothing gets hung up inside the trailer again and we have a better connection overall what i did here is instead of having a bunch of interrupted leads with uh non-waterproof splicers like it was before we uh just grouped it all into one heat shrink connector and bunched them all together into i mean spliced them pretty much into the light so the power leads and really i could have done a better job of grouping some of these over here with these I kind of grouped too many on that side, but it'll still work. But it's, I, did, I did that to both of these. The only one that'll be aside from that is the white wire, which is the ground, which is pretty prominent for anything that's supposed to be a submersible light. And that will go back where it needed to go better. And that we only have one interruption all the way, all the way up, all the way to the front where it'll be interrupted again, but only for the plug, which should be out of the water. In only the most extreme of cases, it will be in the water. And it will never look like this again. All right, so it works. Here we are testing it out freaking sweet and that was good because i wasn't really sure it was going to work in fact what i'm really happy is that this light started working and this light did not work initially when i did the power strip test so that's kind of crappy i just realized they don't work they did work when i tested the strip though those things were working before this we're finally far enough along that we can swap the boat onto the new trailer in fact it's really necessary at this point because i don't really know where to put the hitch post or whatever you want to call it, the crank post. Yeah, that thing. Don't know where to put it. And a few other things. You're just going to have to need the boat on the trailer to know where it goes. So let's get this thing off that old trailer and put it onto the new one and see if my bunk layout works like it did. Because it could all be just a big monumental waste of time. And I just screwed myself out of a week of actual usable time. I could have been doing something else.
this ain't sick. It's actually like this trailer was meant for my boat. It's perfect. Friggin' perfect. See, I do, it's almost like I do this for a living. What's up? Your trailer floats. What the f Well, that's not great. <laughs> what are we supposed to do about that? <laughs> Gotta weigh down your trailer. Well, that's some horse shit. <laughs> Is it floating because the boat's floating? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's freaking hilarious. It's all drifting. I forgot what's so last to the boat. Okay, well, hey, well then, well, let me look and just see if I can see it. Well, hey, the back is hanging off the end, so we're gonna go ahead and pull it up. Yo, you wrapped it? Dude. It's on there. It's on there. Freaking, dude, it is on there really well. Well, that just goes to show you the procrastination sometimes pays off. I don't know if I could have got a better I trailer. I pulled the tip there, let's hit it in the light. What's up? Pull it up there, let's hit it in the light. All right. Yeah, that's the perfect cutoff point, huh? Yeah, you... Nine feet right at the cutoff. And then, dude, I got it perfect. Just look right where the boat starts to taper is right where it stops being flat on those bumps. Oh, no, I got you. Dude, yes. Yeah, expert boat making skills. Yeah, Mac also gave me this whole, this block. This goes right there in like for bigger motors. It goes right there on the power trim unit as a bushing to protect your motor which is great because I don't have a transom support anywhere to mount the transom support yet because I, how would I know how or where to do that? So this is personally going to save me pretty good right now. Yeah. Right here. Is this all the way up? Yeah, I do believe that this is the part it goes on. It goes right there. Hey, so it's, it's, it's making contact right now. I can definitely use that right now. Absolutely. Where do you want me to put your trailer? All right, see ya. Goodbye, old trailer. I mean, it's not goodbye. She's gonna go on another boat. The trailer served me well while it could. It's time for that thing to get re-outfitted and made better use on a smaller boat. All right, long cross-country trips. Here I come. Major victory with a boat lining up on the bunks the way it needs to, and the boat despite it being much smaller than the average bass boat, actually fits the trailer quite well. But it's not done yet. We need to do more things. For one, we need to actually put the crank post on. Our steel scrap pile is more than capable of pulling this off along with any other mods that we're gonna need. So we just have to choose the right one and then get to it. Take some measurements from the initial post, which was pretty successful. So we're just gonna mimic that and retrofit it to the new design, but much better than obviously before. <laughs>
tiny little nation. This is why you probably care for a job. Another row that comes here and couples the boat right there. We also have thought about not doing the back row and only doing the front row from right there that comes right here on this slat and just kind of couples the boat. That way it, it slants up, that way the boat would almost always center by itself. But I thought doing that all over again, I would have got one of those really big coned out rollers that that taper out on each side, it would have, that would have actually also helped center the boat versus that one. I just used that one because that was what was on before, but now that I think about it, that roller sucks. It's more for a John boat than a, than a boat like this. It doesn't really go anywhere. I think it's gonna be fine right there. Then we're gonna make a full walkway. This one, that's a full one by two steel tube. We welded off the end cap with one by two inch flat bar. We'll polish up a little bit more before we finish it. But it goes all the way down to this one where we re-welded it. So that one's fully welded and painted. And then you can kind of see them right there, paired up. We're getting to just place these and mirror these. Now that the boat's completely seated where we need it to be seated. And in theory, these should center the boat. Those will stick out of the water farther than all the other bunks. And it should grab the boat right before the ribs and center the boat. And the boat is off center, we'll know immediately you can back it off, but it should just guide it right onto here. Awesome. I'm gonna fix the lights, but I'm probably gonna add more lights here because I was short. I got more plush lights in, and I'm still undecided whether or not I want to run a side bunk. But I'm thinking I'm gonna run uh, like those river, those rollers. So we're gonna have to make mods coming off this bar up here, and the rollers actually catch the boat high enough to to roll the boat on the gunnel. So far, all the welds have held. I think I should have painted the trailer black instead of this like smoke gray, whatever you want to call it, satin. I haven't even painted the back of my own boat. It's still a different color. It's the color of the trailer. I wonder whether or not I should have made a gusset here, just like a strengthening bar. I could have done that on a flat bar and I could still do that at any time. So I'll just be very, very wary. These don't hold the bulk majority of the weight. If anything, they'll just center the boat, keep it from like rocking on the trailer. Obviously we're not done with this. I wanted to run a cross beam here, at least to here. I don't know what this guy was doing here. And I don't know what this is, but, uh, this is probably gonna be here to stay. Top to give it a rubber grip. We'll also do gator patches, gator skin patches, the non-skid patches all the way down. So I wanna keep this area here for a spare tire. This has no spare tire area on it. So we'll probably weld a spare tire area for it once we get the spare tire. Yeah. We'll eventually run a cross beam from here to here after we clean this off. And then we will probably put a plate, an aluminum plate or something of some sort. So if I have to step right here, I can. I did wanna add a ladder area, but I don't really see that being terribly functional we might do it we might make a little diy ladder stove that you just pop it up and walk right up it it's still on the table still on the table still a thing to do it'd probably be one of the last things we do because we really got to get the back sway like if you're in a river and the boat tries to sway off these fenders the guy hacked the fenders. I'm just gonna leave it for now. They're pretty ugly though, like with a hack. It was like somebody, he just legit took a saws on, cut them out. I don't know why he did that, but he did. And so I'm thinking maybe we weld on some steel fenders, some steel tandem fenders. What do you guys think about this? Steel tandem fenders or we just leave these be? Right now, I mean, I'm gonna leave them be, but later on, you want some steel tandem fenders. Plus we make our own DIY steps that come all the way out. 
let me know because we'll do that. We can do anything now. Remember, we're going to hook up those Gatorback bunk light, those flash lights. You got to go to the brown wire for the power and then to the white wire for the ground or to the trailer for the ground and then they'll work. But that's it, guys. I'm super happy about this. You have no idea. Been wanting to find a trailer that would this would just direct convert over to. You can't find it. There was like a bunch of these bass boat trailers that were broken or tweaked or just wouldn't convert right. And they were always going for like dirt cheap. I never did want to get one because I didn't know how to convert one. But then when I learned how to weld, that's it. You can do anything. Mm -hmm.